Good day, YouTube. Today we're doing just a bit of a quick fun comparison video between Manjaro Linux 21 on the left hand side here versus Zorin OS 16 on the right, whoa, on the right hand side here. So uh, starting off, they are actually both the GNOME desktop environments, although I wouldn't blame you if you're not realizing that on Zorin, it's the, probably the most heavily customized GNOME desktop environment for any Linux distribution that I've seen. They just try to make it simple and beautiful, basically for newcomers coming from Windows 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever you want to call it. Uh, whereas Manjaro is a little bit customized, but pretty much stock standard, at least in comparison to Zorin OS. So you've got your applications menu here and your activities, you search for your app and uh, away you go. Pretty much the same uh, with Zorin, although uh, unlike most GNOME variants, you, you can actually go to uh, the categorizations of the apps. But again, you can just search for it as well. So that's nice to see there too. Uh, I'll just maybe a bit of background knowledge. Manjaro is based on the Arc Linux uh, backend, so a nice thriving community there to say the least. Whereas Zorin OS is uh, based on uh, Ubuntu or Ubuntu the long-term service release. Now these are both the latest releases for Zorin and um, Manjaro there, just to let you know. But what I wanna do here is just uh, minimize this and right click on the, uh, just on the desktop screen. And we can see the, the, the Manjaro side of things as this really simple uh, context menu, not a lot of options. Whereas Zorin OS is uh, just a hand, uh, one of a handful of um, distros that have a few extra options, not the least of which is this open terminal, which uh, I love. Whoa, wobbly windows. Damn, that, that's gonna have a problem with RAM in a moment, perhaps, so we'll have a look at that soon. Uh, what we'll also do is uh, have a look at the, uh, the file manager, see what's going on here. So they've both got this beautiful dark mode, customized icon uh, sets and color accents and tones. Probably give it to Zorin in terms of beauty. It just looks really lovely. It's really eye-catching. Although to some people, uh, to some of the uninitiated there watching the video, it, it might look much of a muchness. And in many ways, I guess you could say that it is still going on with those whoa wobbly windows. Again, probably going to take a hit to RAM soon. If we right-click, uh, we can see that we can open a terminal, and that's what keeps me happy. But they are both running on the the files, the GNOME files. Uh, Good GNOME files uh, file manager there. Uh, let's have a little bit of a look at the, the back end, see what's going on here. So we are running on the 5.15 kernel for the Manjaro 21, whereas uh, Zorin OS 16 is actually running on the 5.13 kernel. I believe this will change soon because uh, it's running on the older version of uh, Ubuntu, the long-term service release, and a new version of Ubuntu has just come out, which means a new version of Zorin OS will come out soon. But uh, this will probably upgrade to 5.15. Oh, just like Ubuntu long-term service releases now, and just like Manjaro is here as well. Uh, you can see that we're running the GNOME desktop environment there as well, which I've mentioned there as well. And last but not least, let's have a little, little bit of a look at the, uh, the the RAM usage and CPU usage on boot up. So starting off, uh, we have uh, the CPU mostly idling out there quite nicely. Uh, Manjaro Linux is on boot up about 730 megabytes of RAM on boot up. Whereas, whoa, Zorin is uh, running at, oh, not too bad actually. Uh, 844 megabytes of RAM on boot up. So a good 100 megabytes more. In fact, as soon as I did that, I noticed the CPU jumped up because it's really using those, those, those graphical tools to, to make the, the visualizations happen. Quite sure you can turn that off, but uh, that would be probably for another video. Yes, I'm actually certain you can. But uh, the whole point of Zorin is to be, uh, like I said earlier to, or at least alluded to, it is all about uh, newcomers to, to Linux from say a Windows or Mac OS uh, environment, that sort of thing. So simple, easy to use, familiar environment. I mean, uh, if you looked at it from a distance, you'd probably think that it was running uh, Windows 10, really. It's got this uh, semi-translucent taskbar here, the start menu then on the left. We've got our little networking and our, our date little things and our notification section, icons. So yeah, really doing its best to, uh, yeah, for, for newcomers, like I say there. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one.